He's currently being charged a jizya, that's a Sharia tax, placed in Islamic countries on infidels. Except he's not receiving the fine in Islamic country, he's receiving the fine in Ontario, Canada. The reason? He wore his shoes into a property that he owns when his tenants were Muslim. And Ontario's Human Rights Court says that he is guilty of religious discrimination. Assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. What's up guys, how are you doing? Get ready for my top five reasons why you'd probably wanna reconsider after watching this wearing shoes in your house. Now one might ask, why all of a sudden are you talking about shoes and feet, Eddie? Well, unfortunately, the hate machine is at it again. Looking for any sinister way to manufacture more fear and hate. Fear mongering is, is a major tool they use amongst others. The hate machine, it depends and thrives. They salivate on this, on your, your ignorance of real authentic Islam. And they capitalize on this, taking advantage of good people like yourselves. They also love making people and concepts as foreign as possible for the sake of demonizing them. So to counter the hate and to make these concepts less foreign and familiar, I'll be going over my top five reasons for the no shoes policy on this week's show. Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his Messenger Allah, la ilaha all right guys you ready you've all by now heard the common mantra sharia law it's invading us it's coming to get you like martians are coming from mars panic fear sharia the boogeyman you know and by now if you've been watching the dean show sharia 10 commandments jesus taught sharia is basically basically god's law it's very simple but they get you on this. You, you follow me? And this next story is no different. It's very, very interesting. And that's why, what motivated me to give you these top five reasons why you should reconsider wearing shoes in the house. Now, about the story, in short, it has to do with a landlord and a Muslim tenant. The landlord was refusing to take off his shoes in the Muslim person's house where they pray and wasn't giving them the five-minute heads up they were requesting before opening the door since he says he already gave him the 24-hour notice. They also found him making a derogatory joke about Muslims on his Facebook page. There's more to the story, I'm sure, but at the end, they all went to the court and the court found the landlord guilty of violating the tenant laws. A fine was issued. That's another discussion. If it was too high or what the real issue is, how, you know, see, the real issue is how sinister, you know, the hate provocateurs as they're running with this and calling it, see, calling it Sharia law, tax fine, Sharia is coming, exploiting the whole situation. It's just really ridiculous things being said. Help him cover his $12,000 Sharia tax. And I'm not going to get into dissecting the whole story, the whole situation on what happened. You think that you think they really care about this landlord? They're just, they're just seizing the opportunity, salivating for this opportunity, and they got it, for another opportunity to, to fear monger and spread hate. You see, when it comes to justice, Islam doesn't look at your color, religion, status. Islam calls for justice no matter what you are. Just look at the passage from the Quran. They put it up in the Harvard University because it's so powerful. We have to be just against ourselves, against our family. We have to be on the side of justice. And God loves the just. Now back to what happened. I just want to clarify a couple concepts. For example, the five minute request. They made a big stink as to the husband wanting five minutes to make sure his wife is modestly dressed. And apparently the wife, Heba is male, needed extra time so she could be modestly dressed. Hey, apparently it takes a lot of effort to don that full Islamic beekeeper suit, beekeeper suit, beekeeper suit, even though she was unemployed and was always at home. 
or they are not praying. They got the 24 notice, you might say. So it's okay that within the 24 hour period, the doors can just open and strangers can just walk in. Maybe your wife is just getting out of the shower, half naked, you yourself as well. You can appreciate a heads up. Why the stink? It's, it's really about humans working together, common respect for each other, and being genuine and sincere in that. You know, you put yourself in that situation. Someone that makes a small request, you can generally appreciate when they do. And you work together and you avoid the bigger problems that can come from not respecting each other and working together. Now, the other concept they're in a hysteria over is the shoes. And this leads us to the question, why do Muslims take off their shoes in their homes or places of worship, you might ask. So here's my top five reasons to make this less foreign to you and more familiar. Number one. Because the gentleman's a Christian, so obviously he doesn't remove his shoes when he goes into his house. That is something of the Muslim tradition, the Muslim people. As Muslims, I want to start off by saying that we love Moses and Jesus. And when you read the Bible, you see them clearly being told to take off their shoes. The shoe policy, you might, you might call it. It reads in the Bible, when Moses is being told by God, do not come any closer. God said, take off your sandals or shoes, for the place you are standing is holy ground. This is in Exodus 3, 5. Or how about in Exodus 40, 31, where it describes Moses and Aaron and his sons and how they used to wash their hands and feet before prayer. Did you know that there are over two dozen references? In this verse, they're also being told to take off their shoes before they pray, to make an evolution, and to prepare themselves. And did you know that there are over two dozen verses referring to taking off the shoes in the Bible? This is some I call, the, again, the no-shoe policy. And I, I want you to note that the same way Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad, last and final messenger, they all washed up and prayed the same way as we're doing today, obeying God. You see, it's becoming more familiar, right? And less foreign, so less fear. Now, let's say you were outside, for example. You have a clean area, maybe it's freezing wet and you don't want to take your shoes out, it's very cold or whatever. Your shoes are clean, you can pray in them. There's a hadith related to this directly, but that's not the point. I'm not going to get into the thick of praying with your shoes. I'm well aware of it. Remember, I'm just breaking down this concept and helping our brothers and sisters in humanity to see the logic in this. And they'll start to see this as less foreign. So less room for demonizing. This is exactly what the people with hate in their hearts want to do and do. Let me give you number two. Did you know that there is a pesticide study released by the EPA? It tells us that pesticides from lawns can remain there up until a week. And then you walk on it with your shoes. So not only are you tracking potentially animal feces, dirt, sand, germs, and whatever else is dirty under the sun, but also poisons into your homes uh, on the bottom of your shoes. That can also cause potential harm to your children and pets who are always playing on the floors. Let's move on to number three. While wearing sh shoes in your home, you're tracking in dirt and filth into your homes on the floors. Also, some people roll around on their beds with their shoes. I want you just to just think about where those shoes have been. What a person might have stepped on. The kind of germs you're also exposing a small baby or child to who's always crawling on the floor. The floor is their exploring ground, their ocean, their o o oasis of a playground that you're contaminating with the dirty shoes. And you don't even want to take them off because of uh, Sharia. Now, how ignorant do you sound repeating that ignorant hate rhetoric? Try going to a traditional, let's say, Japanese restaurant or Japanese person's home, an Asian person, or a whole culture of people that are not Muslim that take off their shoes. How about many holistic doctors? People should remove their shoes when they enter the home because if you think about what you walk around all day long on the outside of your home, you're walking across people's grass or maybe across a park picking up pesticides that people have sprayed. You're walking across other people's at work carpet or flooring and you pick up toxins on your shoes and then you 
come home and you walk around your house and those toxins accumulate in your home. We know from studies done on carpet dust and on from dust bunnies, like on hardwood floors, that there's actually solvents and pesticides that were not sprayed or used in a person's home found in their home. And so the theory being that it was tracked in from the outside. Who make you take off their shoes because they are more in their offices because they are more open-minded and educated to these facts. Tell them that. I'm not going to take off my shoes because of Sharia and your religion. I'm just going to stand here with filth on my shoes and come in your home or office. Okay, how about, how about we work together? Okay, how about we work together after you, you leave? Let, let, let's do this. Check it out. Uh, what, you go ahead and remove your shoes or you scrub the floor. How about that? Huh? Uh, let's work together. Look, I just clean the floor. When you leave, you clean the floor after me. How about that? Or just uh, booties. They have these booties you put on, on your feet. How about that? Or how about shower cap? You can put a shower cap. See, solutions. We're working together. Plastic over the shoes. See, it's, it's about hygiene. In Islam, there's a very strong emphasis on cleanliness, my friends. That what it, that's what it's about, cleanliness. Maybe next I'll give you the top five reasons why we clean with water after we use the toilet. Imagine if you went out to get the, the morning's paper and by accident there was dog poo, dog poo on the newspaper and now you touched it and got it on your hand and now it's on your hand. So you, 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 what do you do? You wipe it or you wash it off? Well, you're a smart person. You, you wash or you wipe and wash because no matter how much you wipe it, you're not going to get rid of the filthy smell. So we wash with water. I'm going off on a tangent on another thing, another concept. So we wash with water just as a side note because who knows what the hate machine might do next and go after this and the headlines will read Muslim Sharia taking over bathrooms, water vessels now in bathrooms. You'll leave that, but we'll leave that for for uh, another show. Maybe if you'd like, I can make the, the top three or five on, on this. But let's move along to number four. Number four, let's see. Less constant cleaning. I mean, vacuuming, dusting, for all that dirt and germ sand. And only God knows what, other, what else you bring into the house. From the petrol gas you might have just stepped on while filling up gas at the gas station, or that contamination you stepped all over on at the same gas station bathroom. How about the feces and urine you don't notice at the bottom of your shoes from the same gas station's bathroom? That's nasty. How about all the extra wear and tear on your carpets? How about that one from your shoes, scratching up the floors from those same shoes, especially the high heel ones or the heavy, those heavy duty ones with the heavy rubber soles? So when you've invested so much money in a good floor, or a carpet, why not preserve it? Makes sense, doesn't it? And protect it from the extra wear and tear from those little rocks and pebbles they'll get into at the stuck in the bottom of the grooves, the bottom of your shoes that, that damage the floor. There's a big difference between a house where you have shoes versus no shoes. Let's go. Let me give you one more, and that's it for this week's show. It's just so much more comfortable and relaxing with no shoes. Just Make sure your socks and feet are clean. Keep good hygiene, but maybe you've got other issues. Oh, oh. If, you're, if your feet are always stink. So now you're complaining about Muslims and Sharia, Islam, blah, blah, blah. But the real issue is maybe you just got stinky feet. That's it. Clean those stinky feet. Keep, keep clean socks. Don't hide those dirty feet and socks in the shoes. Take off your shoes in the house to protect yourself and your children from all the germs, dirt, and filth. But hey, hey, look, let's be fair. If you want to wear your shoes in your home, it's your home. I'm not going to disrespect you. I'm not going to fear monger over you. Look, it's your home. Bring in as much dirt as you please. But now that you see the logic behind why we take off our shoes, show a little respect, courtesy, and kindness. And please... And please take off your shoes and stop making a big deal, manipulating the people. Clean your feet and, and more importantly, then clean feet is a clean heart. Let's fix our hearts from all this hate and bigotry that's being projected out from what's corrupted inside the heart. Now I'll be remiss if I didn't share with you that the only way to truly 
clean the heart is by connecting it to the owner of the heart and worshiping that creator of your heart alone, not his creation. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and the final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them all. They did it. They all called people to be the best to their neighbors. As Jesus said, when he was asked, what's the greatest commandment? Jesus responded, you shall have no other gods but the one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. And after that, love your neighbor. These haters keep missing the main message. Worship God alone. Worship the creator, not the creation. Know God. Love God. Obey God. And be good to your neighbor. And help spread goodness, peace, and love in the world. Not hate. I love you guys. That's why I'm here sharing this message. Thank you very much for tuning in. Every week we're here in the Dean Show. I didn't have a guest, but I wanted to prepare this for you. And I hope you got the benefit. Subscribe if you hadn't already. And we started with peace. Look, look. If you have any questions, you sincerely, you tuned in, you want to know. Look, before, you know, we many people, they, they out of ignorance, out of fear, and, and that hatred we're talking about, they leave some nasty comments. They say some ignorant things. Why not make the human connection? Maybe visit with a Muslim at a mosque. Call us. Call. Be courageous enough to pick up the phone. It's simple. From your home, office, 1-800-662-ISLAM. Spark up a conversation. Ask those tough questions. But make the human connection before you write that bad comment, that vile. This is, look, the more noble route to go, that route is easy. Cursing, profanity, acting in a derogatory manner. Why not make the connection? You don't know. I'm telling you what goodness, what doors of goodness can open. Guaranteed. You got to be sincere and genuine. And tune in here every week to The Dean Show. Tune in. I'll see you next time. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much. God bless you. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Allah, there's only one God and Abraham was his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and Noah was his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and He created Adam And we are the children of Adam Allah, la ilaha illallah